In Windchill, you can create your own local attributes for an object type. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am on an object information page for a WT part. Now, in my instance, there are a bunch of subtypes for WT parts. So this one says mechanical part, but that's okay. I am going to create a new local attribute for the parent type of part, which is again, sometimes referred to as WT part or enterprise part or gray gear by people. To do that, I am going to go to a, another tab where I am also logged in. You are going to use something called the Type and Attribute Manager. So I'll click on the Browse button. And here I am. This is my Sites group. You could also do it from your org. But I'm going to go to the site. Here we have Utilities. And when I click on that, you see a whole bunch of different utilities in here. This one is for the type and attribute management. I will click on it and you can see the splash page where it explains the different kinds of things that you can manage in here. So you have the different types of objects in your windchill instance and what you have listed in here depends on how your windchill is configured. Do you have just PDM link or do you have MPM link? Do you have the requirement stuff? Do you have the quality management? So there are a number of different types inside of here. You can also manage things called global enumerations, reusable attributes. I'll show that in another video when I show you how to create a global attribute and measurement systems and quantities of measure. But anyhow, here is the type for part. I will click on it and here you can see all the different available attributes for the part and to create a new attribute, first you have to let Windchill know that you are trying to edit this type. So I'll go to the Actions button and then choose Edit. And now I can tell that I'm editing because down at the bottom I have Done, Save, and Cancel. To create a brand new attribute, well, we're on the Attributes tab. You can click on the icon to create a new attribute and you get a dialog box in here. And for the internal name, I am going to call this tank system. I'm going to create an attribute for managing the different systems on my tank. And you have five different choices for the type. You have local attributes, which are recommended because they're faster. Now be aware there's a rule that you have to have a column defined or a column available in the database. Sometimes when you try to create a local attribute, it'll say, hey, you don't have enough columns. So you'd have to go with the global option instead. And so with the global option, like it sounds, they are available to essentially all the different types, but they're a little slower than local attributes. And you also have the other different types like an alias and calculated and translated text. But again, we are going to do the local type. Then I will click on the next button and then you are going to choose the type of data this is going to be. And by default, it had string selected, but you can see that you can also do Boolean if you wanted it to be yes, no. There's also date and time, hyperlink, integers, real numbers and real numbers with units. Yes, I skipped over object reference. I don't know what that is. So anyhow, let's choose string and then click on the next button. And then we have set properties and all this stuff in here is optional. So filterable. Hey, are you able to filter based on this attribute? I think that's a good idea. Create hyperlinks. Now I have no use for hyperlinks in here. You can choose whether it's going to display a default value or not. Again, you don't have to set this stuff. A lot of times you just skip over past this. Uh, one other one that I will change and put field type. This is just going to be a single valued attribute. So let's just do a single line. So all this is good. I can click the finish button. The apply button is used if you want to create another attribute. Hey, it'll create this attribute and then reset the form so you can create another one. But I am just creating a single attribute. Let's click on the finish button. And if I scroll down in my list over here, I should be able to 
see it. Here it is. There's the one that I just created. And over on the side, it opens up an additional tab where you can edit the various information in here. But here's another thing that I really like about attributes. Let's say that you want someone to be able to select the value from a list. Well, you can do that by adding what are called constraints. And when I created this attribute, you can see that there are a couple of constraints in here. So for example, there's the string length. Right now it's limited to 500 characters. Also, it is limited to a single value. But if I want a drop down list, well, to do that, you can click on the plus button to create a new constraint. And here are all the different kinds of constraints that you have inside of here. So for example, here's that single valued. Here's where it is required, lowercase, uppercase, string length. But I am going to use one called the legal value list. By the way, here's one here for enumerated value list. Hey, earlier I mentioned you can manage your global enumerations. Well, this global enumerations is linked to the enumerated value list. But let's select the legal value list and then click on the OK button. And so then we have the constraint here, but we don't have any value specified. To do that, let's click on the pencil icon to edit them. And again, this is going to be a tank. So let's say that we have a weapon system. Let's hit the plus sign to add that one in here. Tanks also have a propulsion system. Let's hit the plus sign for that and just do one last one. Let's do one for the armor systems and hit the plus sign and then click the OK button. So now we have three different values and it uses the little pipe character to separate them. You can also manually enter in the different values that you want in here. So I'm happy with this. Let's click the save button in order to get all the different values in there. And here I have the attribute tank system. If I go to the layouts tab for the type, it says, hey, choose a layout from the list above. I'm going to use the layout dropdown. This layouts, this controls the different buckets of information or tables of information that you see on an object's information page. And so your different custom attributes that you create are most likely going to appear in the more attributes table for your different objects that you have in your windshield database. You'll notice that for more attributes, we also have options for if you're accessing windshield on a phone or a tablet. Let's choose more attributes. And then if I take a look inside of here, you'll notice that when I created that custom attribute, it automatically got added to an attribute group to be displayed on the page. And you can change the name of how it's going to be displayed. Here it's called Type Attributes. If you click on the Localize button, that'll open up a dialog box that'll allow you to change that. But I'll go more into customizing the layout in another video. This is all good. I will choose the Done button. And now that I've updated the type, let me go back to the original tab that I was working on, and I'm going to hit the refresh button. And now when I refresh, you'll see that we have a group here of attributes, and it's called type attributes, and it's got tank system listed in here. The other two that you have on here, general attributes, well, these are the ones that you can get to if you go to the actions button and choose edit common attributes. This one does not require a checkout. You can change any of these different values. So for example, we have the default unit is each, default trace code is yes, and item is yes. So those are all the different things that we can change for the general attributes or the common attributes. Let me click cancel since I didn't actually change anything. If I want to change the system attributes, well, this is actually related to the system metadata. So for example, if I move this from one folder to another folder, hey, the location will update. If I check it out and check it in, hey, the modified information will update. If I change it from one context, like from one product to another product or to a library, hey, this value will change. If I 
put it through a promotion process or a revision process, the life cycle state will change. So these aren't ones that you can change directly from the page, but the type attributes, if you want to change these, hey, go to the actions button and then you can choose checkout and edit. And this will come up with a form. And so here we have some attributes that currently aren't displayed on the page, like assembly mode and our source. And then here we have the tank system attribute. And when I click on it, I have a drop down list. And those are the three different choices that I have in here. So this is actually the top level tank. I really wouldn't choose a system, but let's just choose weapons inside of here just for the sake of demonstration. And then I will choose check in. And here you can write in a comment so that if someone goes to the history tab, they can see what changes that you made on this particular iteration. Let's click the OK button. And now you can see that in our type attributes, we have a value selected for the tank system attribute. So that's how you can create your own local attributes for an object type in Windchill. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.